absolutely. Yeah, that, see, I like that. That gives me hope that there's a plan. It's always a concern of mine is, is the diversification of the economy when you see uh, the Boeings uh, leaving yeah. in the beach struggle and, and incessant the struggles. But uh, I, I won't keep you long. I know you're busy. Hey, no. uh, let, let me let me ask you this before we, before we get ready to get out of here. You, you, you're you young. You're, you're a young man. You were a young man when you got on the city council. You catch a lot of grief being so young. Yeah. When you're sitting in there, they give you a lot of... Oh, I, I don't... Not necessarily so much grief. I think it was more people just think, well, you don't know what you're talking about. Right. Um, oh, a patronizing type um, situation I'd be put in where people would say, well, that's nice that you feel that way, but I've been around a lot longer. I mean, the, the majority of the city council were... Um, as old or older than my parents, so it was, it was a you know funny situation that I was in. So they looked at me like a kid, even if they didn't mean to. Right. But the truth was, I was elected just like they were. Right. And our districts are exactly the same size, so I I had a voice at the table for the people of the fourth Wichita City Council district, just as much as any of the other council members did in the other five districts. Right on. Right on. So you didn't waver. You like I'm just voted here. I'm putting. No, I'm I, do my thing. Okay. Good, bad, or indifferent. I stand up for what I believe in, and I say what I mean. Absolutely. And a lot of a lot of people don't like that, or that's not a key to getting reelected. Is some people, even if it's not what they want to hear, I just believe we need people that are principled um, in public office. Right. Well, let me let me ask you this. If I could send you to Washington, D.C. right now, and I said, Mr. Michael O'Donnell, you go in there, you in this government lockdown, how, how, am, I, how am I getting, how am I getting the, the government back to work? What are yeah, we doing? Yeah. Well, don't wish me going to Washington, D.C. <laughs> you know, I don't think, the, the one bipartisan uh, key in Washington, D.C. right now is that nobody's happy. Right. It doesn't matter if you're a Republican, Democrat, if you're the President, the Speaker of the House, the Majority Leader, everyone's frustrated because there there's not a coalition right now of people wanting to do what's best for the government. And right. it's all political games, political one-upsmanship. Um, what, what we have to have is the ability for people to, you know, work together. And, and the Republicans, I, you know, my party's been just as guilty when uh, President Bush was in office pushing things and then the Democrats when President Obama came in was put, were pushing things so there's been a lot of um, a lot of frustration and there's there's been a lot of vitriol and just unhealthy arguments up there, name right. calling where I think we need just some adults to go up there and calm everything down because I look at what happened when Bob Dole and Newt Gingrich were in charge of Congress and uh, President Clinton was in office, and you, you had that argument between Democrats and Republicans, but right. they both came together. Because President Obama doesn't want to negotiate with Speaker Boehner, right. and so Speaker Boehner then doesn't want to negotiate you know, with President Obama, so it's just unhealthy. And, and at some point, the voters have to hold these people accountable. Right. But it, it's hard, because even though people are very unhappy with Congress, for example, they, it has a 10% approval rating. I, I saw that public policy polling did a poll out that Congress has a lower approval rating than, uh, I think, allies. And <laughs> what was so funny about it, we keep reelecting the same people. Right. Because we don't think our individual member is the problem. We think it's the member in you know, Illinois right. or the member in Florida. That's who the problem is, where um, I think the American people just yeah, you know, tell their member of Congress, let's let's Get, let's get to passing good policy and doing what's best for America. But right now it's just this Republican versus Democrat game and nobody gets served well. Right. And, and it's scary because I don't think we've been at a point in American history where the two parties have been so divided. It used to be you had a lot of people that would work with each other and anymore right. it's become so divisive and, and uh, like I said, just vitriolic that we, we're in a scary place right now. And I don't, I don't have the answer to it because I'm not up there. Right. But I do know if I was up there, I would try to, you know, work with individuals to see what can we do. And I think the House of Representatives right now, they're passing a lot of bills, funding bills, unanimously. You know, watch them go over to the Senate getting, you know, shut down right now. But, right. But you might not agree on Obamacare or not, but it's easy to agree on the military, making sure they're funded. Right. National parks, you know, making sure these World War II veterans can go and see their 
a memorial. With right. That. So there, there's certain things that, all right, we understand we're not going to agree on Obamacare, but can we agree on funding these, you know, uh, individual parts of government? And then we can argue the bigger piece of Obamacare later. But for these small things that are small parts of the budget, let, let's not disrupt American lives and the lives of the World War II vets. I just thought that was appalling that they right. were trying to lock them out right. uh, of their memorial. So it's issues like that that should be common sense, and it seems that it, it's not. Right. And Washington is just so displaced from the rest of America. There, there's just this separation that, that I can't understand it or even explain it to anybody because it, it, it is. They're in a different world. Right. And being in the state legislature or the city council, you live in your district and you're here all the time, so everyone sees you. So it's a lot easier for somebody to come up and you know say, hey, right. you guys are you know stupid. You know, it's a lot easier for somebody to come and attack me, which is a good thing. Um, obviously, verbal attack, not physical. Attack. Right. But but you know, at least we are held more accountable, I think, um, on the Topeka or the Wichita level than than I would be in Washington D.C. I don't. Know. I like I, I I like that. Before we get out of here, last question sure. for you. Um, Five years, Michael O'Donnell. Where's Michael O'Donnell in five years? What is Michael O'Donnell doing in five years? I, you know, I don't know. I, I'm up for election in three years, so we'll see if that is uh, what um, I'm going to end up doing. I'm a, you know, I'm an un unapologetic Christian, and, and I believe that God puts us in places and brings us opportunities. And if it's His, if it's His will and His calling for me to run for uh, state senate again, then I'll do that. If I'm going to be a father and have kids, then, um, you know, not, maybe not be in right. that political arena anymore. You know, there's just so many unknowns, uh, especially in today's environment. Three years, a lot, a lot happens. I mean, Absolutely. Nobody would have thought three years ago we'd be where we are today. Right. Uh, in, right. Uh, with government. So we're, we're, you know, coming up into some precarious times. So I, I just feel that I know where I'll be at least through 2016, and I made a commitment to the people of the 25th Senate District that I was going to serve them. So I have three more years left there, and we'll we'll reevaluate closer to that time. Man of the people, Mr. Michael O'Donnell. Anything you want to say to the people before we get out of here? No, it it's just it's been a been a great honor to meet with you, Lamont, and try to um, show people that politicians can be a little bit more accessible than than uh, public perception would, would allow. Absolutely. I appreciate you, Tom. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Mr. Michael O'Donnell. Um, your elected officials, they have that hard to get a hold of. If you got a problem, get a hold of them. Yeah. Mr. O'Donnell, I appreciate your time. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you, sir.